certainly I saw announcement of a match John Cena versus Batista with Bret Hart as the special guest enforcer I believe that's going to be on London's uh, WWE Monday Night Raw that coming up uh, this week next week pretty soon either way uh, but certainly that one to look forward to at least we know uh, that despite Bret Hart's uh, almost farewell in a, in a small sense we know he's still with the company which of course previously we didn't know yeah it's it is it's clear and um yeah i think having brett around is going to be good you know he's uh he's an old schooler and uh he can bring a lot to uh, the younger talent with advice and stuff as well and make people shine a bit more yeah i would like to see that brett hart of course helping his uh well so we say close relatives, the Hart Dynasty this week, when Showmiz took on the Hart Dynasty uh, immediately after Bret Hart had cut that promo. Uh, then uh, we had Bret in the corner of uh, Tyson Kidd, D.H. Uh, Smith and Natalia Neidhart. That match was interesting. Of course, uh, The Miz with his new ring jacket, uh, trying to put himself over. Looked a bit like an Edge rip-off, actually. Uh, don't know where he's going with that. Uh, but indeed, Show Miz certainly don't seem to have any direction at the moment. They have those belts. Miz has got another belt as well. I've forgotten who has the US title at this stage. <laughs> yeah, it's The Miz. The Miz still a US champ. Awesomely so. Um, I like his new jacket. I think uh, <coughs> kind of gives him a new little twist and gets away from the you know uh, the tights and boots, uh, Cody Rhodes kind of buzz. Um, you know he needs he needs to stand out there a bit more. Uh, just like AJ when he's got his um, his robe on, I think it kind of steps him up a little bit and makes him a more of a, a player. You know. Um, so yeah, I, I like I like Mrs. Jacket actually. I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, anything that can put a guy over, and indeed, standing beside Big Show, it's always going to be tricky to get yourself over. I mean, uh, certainly, I think the Pops died for him in 98, uh, but it looks like they're going to go forward with those unified tag team championships. Now, next, we came to the worst guest hosts that Raw possibly has ever had, the most uh, ridiculous movie tie-in. Uh, I know this is mainstream entertainment television uh, on USA Network, Monday nights, but the Hot Tub movie, uh, what was it called? Uh, Hot Tub Time Machine, right? Right. Uh, yeah, Jesus, I don't know what those guys come out of. And even when they came out, um, at first, onto the ramp, I mean, Jesus, that just bombed. And um, to get two guys like that into that hot tub with all those divas, I mean, you know, those they, they don't deserve to be, uh, 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 you know, on, on the... Uh, get that much TV time in that situation, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, the two guys, I certainly know one of those guys, not the younger guy, uh, but the guy maybe in his mid-30s, 40s, his face is familiar, maybe something like Saturday Night Live or something, somewhere, uh, sometime. So, you know, he's kind of got a vaguely familiar look but don't know who he is and indeed the younger guy having the clue. Will we ever even see this movie over here? Probably not. It'll be straight to DVD. Um, I would probably imagine so, yeah. But there you go, that's uh, when that kind of uh, tie-in with the guest host can sometimes be lost in translation. Uh, not always do we know, indeed, who those guys are. No, I mean, they just... Yeah, they got to scrap it. But uh, David Otunga is going to be uh, next week's Raw guest host, which I'm looking forward to a lot. I think that's going to be pretty funny. <laughs> That sounds like a funny one to me, and news to me as well. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Just saw him there on NXT, uh, and I think, yeah, that will be funny. Now, Shawn Michaels gave his farewell speech. Uh, I found myself not really sad by Shawn Michaels retiring. I mean, I watched WrestleMania 26. We watched it here live on Justin. And even while it was happening, I didn't really feel anything. I mean, a couple of years back, we saw Ric Flair retire. Uh, two years, and he's back. He's now in the ring. He's wrestling matches. I mean, you just don't feel when you see someone like Shawn Michaels. He looks healthy. He might have pains we don't know about. But he isn't over the hill. He can still work. We're going to see him back, right? Yeah, um... 
I don't know. It's just so hard to say. I kind of get the feeling that Sean's a little bit legitimate when he says it. That uh, he wants just his... I suppose the 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 later the later day kind of shown the way he is now with the having been uh, born again and everything, and after the whole Flair situation and Flair going back in his word, I think Sean will probably stick to his word. I know uh, there's been a lot of reports of indie uh, offers for uh, the independent scene in the states, and um, obviously they're just you know it's going to take time before any of that stuff uh, comes out but um yeah i don't think i don't think he's uh, he, he'll go back to to the ring i really don't and I, I thought it was fairly genuine speech and quite entertaining and funny as well um and it was sad i thought i i kind of uh, marked out for a little bit i have to say yeah i mean it was kind of halfway there it was you know talking at the heartstrings you're thinking this is sean michaels he's been there since i've started watching i felt like i should uh be sort of emotionally moved it's just not quite I, I don't really buy these wrestlers words anymore if they're going to tell me they're going to retire but without a doubt do not uh deny the fact that he's now removed from the roster and indeed, that's a very permanent sign that Sean definitely is gone for a long time. Uh, this isn't going to be uh, gone for the summer and back, I can certainly say that. But perhaps it's just me hoping that indeed we will see Michaels again. Mm. I think they'll probably give him one of those roles that they give to like Slaughter and uh, you know f- uh, Flair, was an ambassador or something like a that go around to the you know, meeting the kids and then hyping pay-per-views and I'd say Sean, if anything, would probably do that and uh, I, I I don't see him going to somewhere like TNA or even doing indie shows. He's I think he's he's not that kind of guy. He's above that and um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think. I think he'll stick to his word. Yeah, certainly Sean Michaels and TNA, it's not going to happen. Uh, I mean, there's certain people you would never have placed in that TNA bracket. They, some have surprised us. I mean, Ric Flair, but then Shawn Michaels, just so synonymous with WWE. I certainly can't uh, see it happening anytime soon. But uh, in summation, I really did enjoy that Shawn Michaels promo. Uh, I did feel something, uh, but certainly I was kind of waiting for him to say, you know, I'll be back soon. It's just that familiarity. It's so hard to imagine uh, WWE without a Shawn Michaels or indeed without an Undertaker, which, I mean, so far we still have. Yeah, here's the worrying part with with people like that stepping down and they are obviously got to kick uh, the other side of it up with the younger superstars. But, you know, we can all remember even when those guys come in like Taker and... Uh, when Sean, when the Rockers gimmick was over and the barbershop uh, catastrophe and all that kind of stuff, um, the, just the swaggers and the the Dolphs and uh, the the Drews, you know, they just don't have that real star appeal from the get go, you know, and that's what's worrying uh, going forward. I think for WWE, and they should really have a look at that because. I mean, how more safe can it get? I know it's entertainment, but uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a it's a worrying time for wrestling generally, especially when when Impact is doing those low ratings and you know the product's pretty good, I have to say, um, but it's just worrying. I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward when we look at a WWE changed landscape. And all those guys like Ted DiBiase, Sheamus, Cody Rhodes, Jack Swagger, those guys are going to be the main event. And uh, they're probably going to be the main event for the best part of five years or longer. Yeah, I mean, that's a scary thought, isn't it? Evan Bourne versus Swagger Mm -hmm. for the world title. And then maybe the next year you might have, you know, Hard Truth versus, uh, (coughs) you know, Cody for, uh, you know, the, the, the WWE Championship or something. I mean, there comes a point in every TV program where you get a generation gap and people just decide, right, it's time to move on. Especially if the company is going to push it in a PG direction. I mean, that's the uh, way back. We want to go forward, uh, maybe see some controversial angles. 